Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Nianna from the Student Union. We also have Julian from the Student Union. We know these have been difficult and challenging times for us right now, so our goal today is to alleviate some of that challenge by showing you how to make your own face mask. It is important to note that we will be following the CDC guidelines for our mask and all of their instructions and information can be found on their website, cdc.gov. Before we get started, we would like to ask you all to mute your mics. That way we can ensure that all participants hear what our presenters are sharing. Also, please make sure you're utilizing the chat feature. If you have a thought or question that pops up, definitely leave us a note in the chat. We have dedicated staff available to answer your questions. It's important to note that we have UTSA representatives here from Student Health Services and Volunteer Services with us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and pass the mic to Amanda from Student Health Services. Thank you so much, Julian, and thank you all for having me today. Um, I'm Amanda Graves. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Health Services, and I just wanted to let all students know that our clinic is currently still on campus. We still have providers there, so if you are a student living on campus, you can come and see us. You can call first to make an appointment. Um, all students who are not living on campus, you can still come and access our services virtually, so you can go to your MyMed patient portal. It's a patient portal that's available to all students. It's mymed.utsa.edu, and you can schedule an appointment to meet virtually with one of our medical providers. Um, in regards to mask making, there's a couple things I just wanna share with you all. So first off, the CDC does recommend face coverings and masks um, for public settings where social distancing can be difficult. So we know that with social distancing, we wanna stay somewhere from six to 13 feet away from other individuals, because that's how far that droplets typically can spread and can, um, can move. Um, but that's not always possible. So if you are currently still working and you're working in smaller quarters, or if you do have to go to the grocery store or a pharmacy for some of your essentials, a face mask can help um, just add some protection. Social distancing is, should still be attempted whenever possible, um, as well as proper hand washing and hand sanitizing techniques. Remember, hand sanitizer doesn't necessarily replace hand washing. You can use hand sanitizer up to five or six times before you need to wash your hands with soap and water to fully have clean hands. Um, also, avoid touching your face is also recommended. And just let students know that a face covering is not intended to protect the wearer. So just because you are wearing a face mask, it doesn't actually protect you from contracting any respiratory or coronavirus-like symptoms, um, but it actually prevents other people. It's more protection for other people. We know that a lot of people can be what's called asymptomatic, so they could have the virus, but maybe they're not showing any symptoms, but that doesn't mean that they're not viral shedding. So they can still um, spread the virus to other individuals. Wearing a face cover just helps prevent that spread from you to other individuals. This is especially important if you are ever around people who are considered high risk. So people who are diabetic or asthmatic or might be um, over 60, those are individuals that you would want to take extra precautions and protect and wearing a face mask with them would, might be something that you'd want to consider. Um, as they mentioned, all other guidelines for face masks can be found on the CDC website. If you go to cdc.gov slash coronavirus, it will take you through all the recommendations um, and it also will have patterns available for some of the face masks that we're going to be making today. Thank you, Amanda. We're glad to have you with us today. We also have Kirsten from Volunteer Services here with us. Kirsten, would you like to say anything? Yes. Thank you so much for having me today. So yeah, so I am Kirsten from Volunteer Services. Um, Volunteer Services is still doing a ton of service opportunities even though we're virtual. Um, so we're giving a lot of ideas out to students right now. So we're actually making April a month of service. Um, and, and this is actually one of our events for monthly service. So I'm really glad that you all joined us. Um, to, if you're making masks, you can, of course, make them for yourself, for your family, friends, your neighbors, and that's helping the community um, just by doing that. But if you want to take it further and you want to make more and donate them, I actually have a couple of contacts that you can donate some of your masks to. So um, some groups that have reached out to me directly, the San Antonio uh, State Hospital, um, Alpha Home Animal Care Services, they're all willing to take um, masks that are made at home. Um, if they have any certain uh, guidelines or restrictions, we can definitely be in touch with them before um, you actually bring them and drop them off to donate. Um, and we'll want to be connecting with them um, beforehand just so we're practicing social distancing. If we can do a no contact uh, donation, Dropbox, anything like that, um, we want to make sure that we take all those um, steps when donating anything to any of our nonprofit agencies. One other organization you can connect with is the Mitchell Chang Foundation. 
Um, they actually have four or five drop-off locations in San Antonio, and they're asking that if you donate a mask, you just put it in a Ziploc bag first, and then you can drop it up in any of their donation uh, drop-off spots. They have some in Stone Oak, Fair Oaks, um, and near SeaWorld. Uh, sea um, so you can definitely uh, connect with that foundation to drop off any masks. Um, other things that we're doing for month of service, um, we'll have uh, lots of ideas and virtual um, projects coming up. We have card making and things like that. So definitely stay tuned. You can find it on our Instagram at UTSA volunteer. Um, and we would love to share any activity that you do for month of service. So if you do donate any masks, feel free to um, share about it on social media and tag us at UTSA volunteer. Or if you want to email us, our email is volunteer at UTSA.edu. Um, I can leave our contacts in the chat in case anyone um, needs to follow up with us. But we would love to share any activity that you do around month of service, including donating masks. Um, if you share it, it's most likely going to um, inspire someone else to do something for the community during this time. So we really love to do that. Um, yeah, so thank you all for uh, having me and I appreciate um, any work that you guys do with your masks. Thank you, Kirsten. Now we'll move over to Jacob Peterson from the Student Union. He will be guiding us through the process of creating a face mask. We encourage you to use the chat feature and ask us any questions that you have. Hello everyone, I'm Jacob from the Student Union. I hope you all have been staying healthy and safe during the quarantine. Today I have the joy of sharing with you how to make cloth face masks following the CDC guidelines. So starting off, there are a few materials that you're gonna to need to do this. First off, you're going to need a fabric or cloth, uh, enough of it to make a 10 inch by six inch rectangle. Now the cloth that you're gonna use, the CDC recommends that you use a tightly woven fabric. Uh, for this case, I have like cotton fabrics. So tightly woven, you don't want any holes in here. That way there's no compromise to the actual uh, protection of the mask. So you'll need that. Uh, you'll need scissors to cut that out, as well as a ruler or a measuring tape to make the measurements. And then lastly, you're gonna need a, um, well, you'll need elastic as well. So in this case, I have elastic bands. Now, if you don't have elastic bands on hand, there are a couple of substitutions. You can use rubber bands, or I have an example later where I actually use a, an abundance of uh, hair ties that I had lying around. So I'll show you those later. And then lastly, you'll need a method of sewing these materials together. The first mask I made was done by hand. So it takes a little bit of uh, time to learn how to do that. If you need resources on how to sew by hand, uh, there's plenty on YouTube. That's how I learned personally. And just make sure that um, you know, you're careful when sewing, things are sharp. So be careful with that. Uh, for today, I actually sewed all these with a machine. Now I know not everybody has a machine, but you can do both hand sewing and machine method. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, uh, the first step you're going to want to do is cut out two 10 inch by 6 inch rectangles of fabric. So I had a bunch of spare fabric that was over at my grandma's house. So if we look at the fabric, like I said, it was tightly woven. And I cut out two different designs that way the mask would look kind of pretty. So this one is a 10 inch by 6 inch. It's just 6 inches for that short side, 10 inches all the way across. Try to cut them as evenly as you can. That way um, it comes out looking good. And then after you cut out both of those rectangles, you're gonna lay them on top of each other to where it forms one rectangle. I'll show you an example of that right here. So we lay them where they're perfectly meshed on both sides here. Now, if you have a design that you wanna show on the outside, you wanna make sure that that is facing away from you and that the pattern is like showing on the outside. So when you put on the mask, it's gonna be like this. So you want this side that you're gonna be breathing into to face you. Okay, and once you have those down, the next step is gonna be folding to sew. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the 10 inch side, which is the long side here, and you're gonna fold it in about a quarter of an inch. It'll look like that. And if you're gonna be sewing with the machine, you could actually just go straight sew it just like that. Uh, if you are sewing by hand, I recommend that you pin these down before hemming them. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pin like this, if you can see on the camera, you're gonna fold in your side, you're gonna stick the pin all the way through the other side and then come back in the other side and then kind of pull it to where the pins are flat across. 
That way the fabric stays folded down while you're sewing. And just a quick rundown for the basics of sewing by hand. Uh, you're gonna have a needle that has a thread that goes through it. You're gonna tie the thread on the end. And all you're gonna do is kind of like a little, uh, like a wave motion going through the fabric. Try to get it as tight as you can going through. And then to tie it off at the end, I recommend going on a YouTube video to look that up because it's a little complicated to explain. But once you get all that through to the side, you're going to end up with a finished product that looks something like this. Both sides are going to be folded in nice and neat, and they're going to be sewed tightly enough to where that the fabric isn't going to come apart if I pull on it. So you don't want to fold, um, you don't want to sew so, so wide that it creates gaps in because that could also let like air out if you were to sneeze or cough all the droplets would fly out, you don't want that. So that's it for the first step on folding in that. The next one, we're gonna do the two smaller sides. So I have an example of that here. And all you're gonna do is on this side, you're gonna fold it in, and this is gonna be a half of an inch fold. So this is gonna be a little bit wider than the two 10 inch sides. And the reason for that is we're gonna be fitting in our elastic on that side. So you wanna have enough room and this little gap here to fit the elastic all the way through. So once you fold them in on the side, you can hem them again, and you'll end up with a product that looks like this. All the sides are folded in over each other and tightly woven together. That way there's no gaps. Right, now once we have all that together, we're gonna move on to the elastic. And as I said before, the elastic can kind of vary depending on what you're gonna be using. Uh, I'm using the elastic bands today. You can use rubber bands and hair ties like I mentioned before, but the measurements might vary depending on your face shape. So it's going to take a little bit of a trial and error, but the CDC website uh, recommends that you do six inches of elastic on the measurement. If you have a bigger face, you might need to go larger and also depending on what you're using, the elasticity will vary. So you might have to kind of play around with that measurement. But all you're going to do so take six, six inches and you're gonna cut the elastic and you're gonna feed the elastic through the holes on the six inch side, the little gaps right there. And this can be kind of difficult. So I recommend when trying to fit the elastic through that you either use a bobby pin or in my case, I used a mechanical pencil and all I did was kind of like fold the end sort of like that where you have a little bunch, clipped the mechanical pencil on the inside there and just kind of fed it through the hole. That way it didn't get caught on the inside. And once you feed it through, you're gonna get something that looks kind of like this. This one's already sewn, I don't have it um, free, but it'll be just a band. It's gonna end up like that, just a spare band. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it over and stitch them together. That way you get a ring that goes around just like this and then you're gonna put the stitch back inside and you're gonna sew across wherever the band is at, that way that the, the rubber band doesn't move around and break. So. Okay, once you have that, you have a completed mask if you do on both sides. Now you are gonna have to adjust the tension on these sometimes if you realize that the six inch uh, stretch wasn't enough to actually fit your face or if it was too loose you're gonna have to adjust the sizing. So I have a couple completed masks here that I can show you. That first one was using an elastic band. And this was the first mask that I had made. This was sewn by hand. And I'm kind of proud of this because it took me a really long time to make this, so don't be discouraged. Uh, this one I used hair bands. Now the way that I did this was I had to get creative with what I had at home. So I took two hair bands and I kind of folded them together in a circle, and I took a third one, ran it through, and just kind of tied it back. And this actually worked pretty well. It hasn't come apart yet, which is great, because you don't want these to ever snap or break, because you uh, you're might you gonna want to wash these every now and then, that way that they're fresh and clean. And that is how you make the cloth face mask. If you have any questions, I will answer them to the best of my ability, and thank you so much. Thank you, Jacob, for walking us through your process. We definitely feel more safe knowing that we can create our own face mask at home. Uh, if you feel that this message was too challenging, be sure to check out the CDC website for alternative ways to make a face mask.
Before we close out for the afternoon, are there any final questions or comments from our audience? We'd love to hear from you. I see one question from Allison. She's asking, what are the steps for putting on and taking off the mask? Taking off the mask. So uh, for a general use, all you have to do is where that circle is on the elastic, you're gonna pull the whole entire thing, kind of just hold it in your hands like this, pull it up to your face, and then wrap around your ears. And then you might have to adjust the tension, but make sure that the mask is completely covering your face, your nose, any type of uh, holes you wanna minimize. That way, if you were to sneeze or cough, that no droplets get out and you're not contaminating anyone around you. So that's the basics for putting on the, the mask. And then taking off, you just do the kind of same thing. You'll pull from the ear, and then uh, just pull it off your face. I would also like to recommend that as you take off the mask, you don't take it off touching the front of it because then that's, again, contaminating your hands with any particles that may be on the mask. Hmm. But just as Jacob demonstrated, pull from your ears, take off, pull it away from you, and then I would almost immediately put it somewhere, either in a Ziploc bag um, or Tupperware or in, straight into the washing machine to, re to clean it for reuse. We have one question from Anna, and I think this is for Kirsten. She's asking, she said, thank you for doing this. If we are going to donate masks, do we need to disinfect them before taking them to the organizations mentioned at the beginning, or would they be disinfecting them once they receive the masks? Great question. Yeah, so I did put all the organizations and the foundation in the chat so you all can see that um, and our contact info. But um, as far as the protocol of disinfecting them, um, I would recommend that if you can, um, clean them and then put them right in a Ziploc bag. Um, each organization has um, a little bit different steps. I know the uh, foundation that I shared, um, the Mitchell Chang Foundation, um, does want their donations in a Ziploc bag. Um, but we can find out about the other ones. So if you are going to donate, either you can directly contact them yourself or you can contact volunteer services and we'll connect you um, to find out uh, what they would like for their organization. Thank you. Any more questions? I'll wait a few seconds to see if anyone else chimes in in the chat. All right, well, if there are no more questions, I'd like to check in with the UTSA departments. Are there any final comments by Student Health Services or Volunteer Services? No, I think I'm good. Thank you all for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for educating fellow students on face masks and for making them available and encouraging to make um, the face mask for other individuals. And I would just reiterate um, that we hope that you are staying safe and healthy and practicing good hand washing, social distancing, staying at home when possible. And if you do need anything, Student Health Services is here for you and you can visit us virtually. Just go onto your MyMed patient portal to make an appointment. Okay. If there's nothing else we need to cover today, we just want to say a big thank you for joining us here today. Uh, we hope that you stay safe and hope to see you all soon.